Over the several sinful hours I've put into TF2, I've always wondered how the Pyro class came to be. Valve made a Meet the Class video about the Pyro, but they never really delved deep into the origins of the Pyro itself and the story behind it. That's why I'm here today to answer the important questions about the Pyro. Like where it came from? What's its story? Why are all Pyro players either scumbag cock twizzlers or brainless fart smacks? Is Billy still alive? All these questions and more will be answered on this week's episode of Pyro Origins. The Pyro was born in 1921 near the shores of Mozambique, Africa. It was raised in the city of Nakala by its two guardians, Dublin Yule and Emma Huon. It was rumored that the Pyro's real parents sold their only child thing for a sweet gram of white rock as a baby because of how ashamed they were to have contrived such a little fucking abomination piece of shit. What the real parents didn't know, however, is that the druggies they sold their child mutant to were actually caring and loving souls, looking to save and nurture a lost child, bringing us back to Dublin and Emma. Together, they cared for and raised their new child, who they officially named Kuf Eshiaud, after Dublin's grandfather. Together, they taught Kuf how not to be a total asshole and to be very skilled in almost everything Kuf did. The years went by and Kuf had grown into a proper young adult filled with wisdom and love. Until one fateful day. Kuf and its guardians were sailing from Mozambique to Madagascar to trade exotic hats with the islanders when it happened. A wild storm had erupted from the cloudy dusk, sending waves crashing into the small sailboat they were in, until one wave violently threw Kuf overboard. Kuf hit its head on the edge of the boat as it flew off, knocking it unconscious. Kuf's repulsive body, lost in the seas with no hope of recovery. Dublin and Emma searched, but nowhere could they find their... uh... thing. Kuf's seemingly lifeless body floated miles down the southern ocean and met along the Antarctic, where it gained an understandable resentment to anything remotely cold. As it trailed the outside of the Antarctic, it began to float thousands more miles in the general direction of Australia. On the way there, Kuf's head hit a lot of rocks, and I mean a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of rocks, protruding off the shores of Australia. But eventually, Kuf sailed through Australia and was washed up on the shores of Sydney. Its body was found by the infamous Sexton Heil himself, who proceeded to yell the life back into Kuf. Kuf regained consciousness, but had only half if not less of its mind still with it. Everything it was ever taught was backwards or mixed up. The sea and rocks had taken their toll upon Kuf. Saxton slowly asked for its name. The mindless husk of a hardly human responded. Douchefuck. Saxton raised an eyebrow and asked, Who let this happen to it? Douchefuck responded slowly. W. M. 1. 